I've heard stories like um, this this one teacher uh, was was sick or couldn't be at school one day, and the note that she left for the substitute teacher was, okay, either have the kids like read chapter seven or just search YouTube for Vsauce and just play some of those. That was the instruction, and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. There were elements of Vsauce, Vsauce 2, Vsauce 3 that are all educational. The educational component came organically out of how we all thought about things and talked about them. We were really curious and wanted to know why things were the way they were or what would it be like if they weren't. And the answers to those wound up requiring a lot of learning. And so it's kind of um, recreational learning in a way. The prototypical audience member that I imagine when creating something is me. If I, during my research, have satisfied my curiosity for the subject and I feel like I understand it now and can explain it to other people, then I know that it's done and it's ready to be made into a video. Education is always fun. It's just that people don't always see how applicable it is to their day-to-day -day lives. Whether it is black holes or the way paint dries, there's a way to tie that into what people are actually passionate about. If you just hang out with me and you're my friend, I will bug you about the actual definition of irony and whether or not Alanis Morissette's ironic is actually ironic. Not because I'm presenting uh, a video on irony, but because it's who I am. If I wanna be able to explain uh, how, where and when dogs were domesticated, I've gotta brush myself up on all the research. But I don't do my own original research, I am this conduit for what the, the real heroes, the experts and researchers and writers uh, are doing. And I just try to you know, celebrate that and get everyone excited about it and tell them, you know, hey, go check this stuff out. So um, accuracy is really important and it's always very important for me to source what I'm talking about. You look at the descriptions of the videos I put out and you can see where I have found everything. So if I tell you that dogs probably began 16,000 years ago in southwestern China, well, that's, that's a particular interpretation. It's a very, I think, convincing one, but why don't you go read the paper for yourself? A lot of really good questions come through social media, and the same questions get asked a lot. That, that really helps me figure out what everyone's thinking about. The shadow blister effect was one that uh, people asked about a lot. I finally got around to explaining that one. But as two or more penumbras approach and overlap, the combined amount of light they block can be enough to produce a perceivable difference, the shadow blister. And it just felt really good. It really felt like, whew, we did it. On YouTube, you have to give a video a title, and I can't fit every single question into the title, so I will frequently say, um, why do we get bored? That's the title. But then the video is about lots of other things tangentially related, which I think makes the episodes a bit more unique. If I really was just gonna tell you why we get bored, you could just Google, why do we get bored? Or look at the Wikipedia page for boring. The process of enlarging a hole like the barrel of a gun is called boring. Boring. Boring a hole is a slow process requiring repetitive movements from a tool that goes in circles, which may be why things that are slow and repetitive and don't appear to be going anywhere came to be described with the same word. They're boring. All I know is that I'm a curious person and there are millions of other people that share that curiosity.